Okay everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the properties of an aerogel actually made out of a chicken egg. So this is actually a real egg that was made through the same process that they make aerogels, but instead of using silica, they used an egg, and they turned it into an aerogel egg, or an aero egg they call it. So if you haven't heard what an aerogel is, an aerogel is the lightest solid known to man. They're extremely lightweight. Now normally these aerogels are made out of silica and they have extremely good insulative properties. So I showed this in a previous video when I actually poured hot lava on a silica aerogel. And you could see that I was actually able to touch the hot lava under the aerogel without getting burned. The aerogel was actually glowing red hot and I was able to touch it because it was insulating the lava from losing its heat. But the thing is, the way the aerogels are made, you can actually make them out of almost anything. And in this case, it's been made out of a chicken egg. So you can see that my half a chicken egg here weighs 23 grams, whereas the aerogel version of it only weighs two grams. <laughs> So the finished product of this aerogel egg is actually 50% air by volume. And it has a lot of the same properties as the silica aerogel that you've seen before. So what I wanna do is I wanna test out some of the properties of our aero egg here and see how similar it is to the silica aerogel. See if it has thermal insulating properties and then see what happens when we put water on it. Okay, so now I have both my eggs here turned over in a pan. I have my aero egg and my normal egg. Let's heat up the pan and see how well this egg is, stays insulated against the heat of the pan. Okay, now what's interesting is the liquid egg, the one with liquid in it is only at 73 degrees Celsius, but the solid, uh, the aerogel one is at 95 degrees Celsius. So the liquid one actually has an advantage because it's evaporating the liquid from the egg, whereas the solid one doesn't have anything to take the heat away. And so even though it is very insulative, compared to something with liquid in it that can evaporate off the liquid, it's still heating up faster. So this isn't that fair of a test. Okay, so now let's try the arrow egg and a piece of wood, see which one insulates better. So the wood's at 93 and the egg is at 87. So it's at least comparable to a piece of wood and in insulating properties. So normal silica aerogel is an extremely good insulator. In fact, you can see in this picture here with a blowtorch under it, it doesn't even shrivel the flower at all. So let's see how our egg aerogel holds up. You can see it got cracked in our pan in that last experiment there. Let's see how it holds up to a blowtorch. Okay, I put some wax on the other side of it. Let's see if it melts the wax when I hit the other end with the blowtorch. Okay, let's flip it over. It seems okay a little bit warm. So it looks like it still is able to insulate pretty well. About the same as you'd expect a piece of wood about this thick to insulate you. Now let's see what happens when we drop some water on it. So it absorbs the water really well. How about we drop a whole nother half in some water and now see if it will suck in that water and become a normal egg again. Put it in here, see what happens. Whoa. It's immediately starting to bubble. Okay, it's now been about eight hours. Let's see what our egg looks like. Okay, let's pull this out. So it's still pretty solid. It definitely doesn't have the texture of a normal egg yet. I think it would really need some time in the water to soak in all the liquid around it. And let's see if it can reconstitute. 
Okay, it's been three days now. Let's see what our egg looks like. <laughs> Look at that. It's fully reconstituted now. So the yolk inside feels a little different. It's still a little bit harder than normal. But you can see how much bigger it has grown in size now. What's weird is the yellow color has gone. So the yolk no longer looks yellow. So it must have lost that color during the process of turning it into an aerogel. Okay, so normally when you try to dry stuff out, for example, when you dry a grape out, it turns into a raisin. It's all shriveled up and wrinkled, and the internal structure is pretty much destroyed. That's because, for example, look at these two papers underwater. So let's say this is some internal structure underwater. So notice how these two pieces of paper underwater aren't attracted to each other at all. They can come close to each other. They don't stick to each other whatsoever. But then watch what happens when I pull them out of the water. They're just stuck to each other like glue. I can pull them apart, but if they come close to each other, they just stick together. It's like they're attracted to each other and anything around them. But in the water, they're not attracted to each other at all. See how they're not attracted to each other? Now the reason this is happening is because of the liquid air interface. So because of the surface tension of the water with the air around it, it causes whatever else has water on it to want to join together. So it pulls together surfaces. So basically, because of the air-water interface, anything that has water on it wants to stick together. And that's the reason why when you dry something out, it collapses the internal structures. Because as soon as you create an air void in there, the surfaces that are close together just stick together so it sucks in any pockets in there. So anything that was normally a part like this just gets sucked together like that. So in order to not collapse any internal structures, you want to avoid having a gas liquid interface because once you have those two interfaces, then things just stick together. Well, if you want to avoid that, one option is to first turn it to a solid and then turn it to a gas. And that's what freeze drying does. For example, you can see what I mean with this phase diagram here. So a phase diagram is just telling you what state one substance will be in at a certain pressure and temperature. For example, if your pressure is here and your temperature is down here, that means it's going to be a solid. But if you keep the same pressure and increase the temperature, then it'll turn into a liquid. And then if you're a liquid and you drop the pressure and move down here, it's going to turn into a gas. So when we're talking about making an aerogel, what we want to do is keep the porosity or keep the internal structure of something intact. So we never want to turn from a liquid to a gas. So let's say we're here at atmospheric pressure. We don't want to just increase the temperature and boil off the liquid to turn it into a gas. So we don't want to just move this direction. And we also don't want to just decrease the pressure and just move this direction. So no matter what, we don't want to do this. Another thing we could do is instead of going from a liquid to a gas, we could first turn it to a solid and then go from a solid to a gas. So basically decrease the temperature and then decrease the pressure. And this is what freeze drying is. So freeze drying keeps the internal structure a little bit better because you never have a liquid gas interface, but you have a solid gas interface. But even with a solid gas interface, you still do have some collapsing of an internal structure. But is there a way to never have any liquid gas or solid gas interface at all? Well, if you watch Veritasium's recent video on aerogels, then you know there is a way to do this. And it has to do with this critical point here. Now, what a critical point means is that You'll find that if you put enough pressure on some liquid and also keep increasing the temperature, what happens is that it doesn't actually turn from a liquid to a gas, so it doesn't actually start boiling. But what happens is the liquid and gas interface just kind of goes away and it becomes this mixture of a liquid and gas together. In fact, there's no longer a difference between a liquid and a gas. So with that being said is what you could do is you could have a liquid and you'd have to increase the pressure a little bit and then you'd have to increase the temperature and then once you're past this point all you have to do is decrease the pressure 
and now you've entered into this gas phase without ever crossing this liquid gas interface. So you never went through boiling or anything to get there. All that happened is you had this liquid that turned into this kind of liquid gas with no interface and then you decrease the pressure and it's suddenly a gas. So you never had a point where there were these voids that had a gas pocket that was sucking everything together. And this is how aerogels are made. So basically how you make an aerogel is you get in a very extremely porous medium that has a lot of water in it. And this is how our aero egg or aerogel egg is made. Basically what happens is they stick a normal chicken egg and they put it in ethanol. So normally the egg has a lot of water in it. It's mostly made out of water and it has this very fine matrix of proteins. But you stick the egg in ethanol and eventually the ethanol and water kind of mix together. You'll eventually replace all of the water in the egg with ethanol. So basically you have an alcohol filled egg. And then you can put that egg in liquid carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide has to be under pressure to be a liquid. And so basically you put this in a pressure vessel and you pour in liquid carbon dioxide and then the liquid carbon dioxide replaces the ethanol in there just like we did with the ethanol and water. So eventually it diffuses into the egg and now you have a carbon dioxide filled egg and you have it under pressure. And then all you do is increase the temperature and now it's at the super, and now it's a super critical fluid in the egg. So there's no longer a liquid gas boundary layer in there. And then once you're there, all you do is decrease the pressure and suddenly you've replaced everything with a gas without having gone through a liquid gas interface. So now you have this gas filled egg. So it's filled with carbon dioxide. And eventually through diffusion, the carbon dioxide leaves the egg and you just have air left in there. But it keeps its structure intact. And so basically if you add water to this egg, it should have almost the same internal structure as before it was dried super critically. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't hit the bell, hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video's out. And leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comments section. And if you haven't checked out theactionlab.com, you can see the Action Lab subscription box. The first box that you can still get is a vacuum chamber box. The next one is a self-pouring fluid box. So you get the same chemical that I used in my previous video where I made the self-pouring fluid where you start to flow it and due to the long molecular chain, it pulls the rest of the fluid out of the cup, which is pretty cool to see. So head over to theactionlab.com to check that out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.